Hey, what's going on guys? Oscar Mini here and here with me is a Synology DS220J which is a NAS I was sent to us from the guys at Synology to build our uh, in-house server and in collaboration with these guys I'll be giving away one of these to a lucky subscriber so stick around to the end of this video to get more information about this. So for those of us who do not know what a network attack storage is, this video is going to be split in three sections. In the first section I'm going to talk about what a NAS a network attack storage is. While in the second section, I'm going to tell you guys what the specs of this one, this exact NAS is, the specifications, the features, what it comes with, how to set it up and all that good stuff. And by the end of this video, I'm going to talk about the various people the DS220J would suit. So without taking much of your time, yo guys, let's get started. So what is a network attached storage? Now a NAS is a device that lets you save and share files over multiple computers, which could be your smartphones and your desktop computers and laptops in a network. Now these files or data can be accessed both by the computers in the network and also computers or laptops and smartphones which you give access to the network over the internet. Now let's talk about the Synology DS220J. This NAS here, the Synology DS220J, that's a mouthful, is a two-bay NAS. And now by two-bay NAS, I mean it accepts just two drives with a maximum of 16 terabytes on each bay. It features a 4-core 1.6 GHz Realtek processor, 512 MB DDR4 DIMM RAM, giving you more power than the predecessor, the DS218J. So here's what the unboxing experience feels like for the DS220J. We have the NAS unit itself in this fabric wrap, the user guide, the power adapter, wall power plug, an Ethernet cable, this little metal piece to aid you in installing 2.5 inch drives, and a couple screws to hold everything together. On the front side of this NAS here has four LED indicators. From the top to bottom, the status indicator, the LAN connection. Now the next one shows if there's a disk in bay one. While following that is the indicator to show if there's a disk connected in bay two. Next down is the power LED indicator and the power button. While the rear features two USB 3.0 ports to connect external drives for either backup or data transfer, the one gigabit LAN port to connect this device to your network and also the DC power in port. Now, even though you do not get access to the drives from the front panel here, like some other high-end NAS units, setting up the drives here is quite straight to the point. First off, you have to slide the two sides apart as so, and you get to see the part where you can install your drives. There are basically SATA connections, but even though you can use regular hard drives, they would not withstand long and heavy use. Hence, you have to pick up a dedicated NAS hard drive, such as the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS HDD, which I have here, or those red drives from Western Digital. I'll have both links in the description below. This unit here can take up to 32 terabytes of storage, that's 16 terabytes on each bay, and depending on your configuration, you might have a maximum of 32 terabytes or 16 terabytes. Now, if you run a RAID 0 configuration on here, it means you're getting a 32 terabyte storage on this device. But the problem with that is, if one of these drives gets damaged, you lose files that have been stored on that particular partition. But if you run a RAID 1 configuration on this device here, it means you're having a redundant drive on the device, meaning one of the drives duplicates itself or mirrors itself onto the next drive and you're left with just 16 terabytes of storage on this. So it depends on what you want to configure this for. But as far as backup, I do not recommend using a redundant drive here as your only means of backup. You might want to set up a different Synology NAS somewhere else and have everything here offload to that off-site location. Now, the other means you might want to go about this would be to pay for an S3 storage with Amazon, as that's what I've done with mine here. And I have everything here mirrored on my S3 storage. That basically could work for you also. Now, let's get back to installing the drives on this NAS. Place the hard drive as so and fit in the slots. Then, using the screws from the box, hold the drive firmly to the case. With that out of the way, firmly cover and screw the two pieces of the box together. Now, with the Ethernet cable, Connect from one of the LAN ports of your router to the 1 gigabit LAN port of your Synology and then turn it on. You have to find the IP address for the NAS on your network and the simplest way to go about this is to log into your router control panel, then check the attached devices and you should find it there. Now visit this address in your browser and click on setup. Download the latest firmware of the Disk Station Manager from Synology's website, browse to it, locate and continue with the installation. Agree to the terms in order to format the drive. It should take a little under 10 minutes to get things up and running. Once that's done, the server restarts and you should be able to enter a name for your server and the login credentials you intend using for this purpose. 
Synology should prompt you with some apps you can install on the server, some of which include Plex, which is a media server for photos and music and videos. I might make a separate video for that in the future. There are other apps such as WebStation to host a website and a whole lot more. You can basically skip this process for now. Now you should be able to access the files on the NAS, but one thing you shouldn't forget is creating a shared folder which would be accessible to devices on the network. To do that, open File Station from the desktop you see here and that should prompt you with a step-by-step -step guide on how to set this up. You can access the NAS in your network devices on Windows or Mac. If you are not able to find the drive from Finder on Mac, while in Finder, click on the Go menu, select Connect to Server down there and this should mount your drive right away. And with this, you should be able to access and play files from this server over Wi-Fi or other connections as long as you are on the network. For Windows, if you do not find the drive mounted in Explorer, go back to Disk Station, open the control panel there, click on File Services and turn on the WS Discovery. You should be able to access the NAS over Explorer just like every other mounted device on Windows. Now for an Android device, go to the Play Store and install DS file from Synology and you should be able to access all the files on your network also here. So if you find it a little difficult to make this connection here, here's how it went about mine. I have the ZTE MF286, which I use as the modem. I don't use the Wi-Fi or the router capabilities here. I only use it as a modem. And this device is connected to my Netgear RAX40, which is a Wi-Fi 6 compatible um, router. This provides internet to this one while the Synology NAS is connected to this other device. So everything on this network has access to the files on the NAS drive here. Who exactly is the Synology DS220G meant for? Now, if you run a small network for a small business or a home network, and you want to share files between computers and smartphones, want to stream videos and want to play music amongst all your devices, this is a perfect device for you to have in that network. But if you're someone who wants to work on maybe editing videos over the network from this device or you want to have like a HTTP web server from this device or transcode videos over the internet, I don't think this is the best option for you as there are better Synology devices you might want to pick out from their stores there. So that's been it for this review. Now let's get back to the giveaway. In collaboration with Synology, we would be giving away one of this, a unit to a lucky subscriber and the step to getting this is quite simple. Hit on that subscribe button right away and next, you have to follow the giveaway link in the description to fill out a survey. Now, this giveaway should last for a period of two weeks. And on the 9th of June next month, which is um, June 9th, 2020, the winner will be announced on my Twitter. So you might want to follow me on Twitter at Oscar Frankie to get to hear the announcement or see the announcement of who wins this unit. And that's pretty much all you have to do to win this. Subscribe, fill in the survey. I'm going to reach out to the winner on the 9th of June and We'll ask for your shipping details before we ship the item to you. And that's been it for this review. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done those already. Other than that, it's goodbye, and I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Quit that day. Don't wanna have to wait tonight. Wait tonight. Better off. I'm gonna find my way tonight. Wait tonight.